Hi, my name is Sarah and I'm a hospital pharmacist. So I plan to do a medication counseling series and explain to you how I would counsel patients on certain medications. Today's video will be about DOAX, which are direct oral anticoagulants. There's four different types approved by the FDA. Apixaban, also known as Eliquis. Rivaroxaban, also known as Xarelto. Dabigatran, also known as Pradaxa. Adoxaban, also known as Luxiana. According to the Journal of the American Medical Association, after the FDA approval of DOAX in early 2010s, the proportion of patients initiated on DOAX increased to 86.8% for Medicare patients and 92.1% for commercially insured patients. So as you can tell, DOACs are quickly becoming the anticoagulation of choice. DOACs have significantly less contraindications with food and other drugs, which makes them more predictable, thus requiring less intense monitoring as compared to warfarin. Now, since more and more patients are becoming prescribed with DOAX, it's really important as pharmacists that we can provide really comprehensive patient counseling. So the whole reason I'm doing this series is that I wanna help you fellow pharmacy students or even new grad pharmacists who are you know, unsure on how to properly counsel a patient on a medication such as DOAX. Now medication counseling is very important from the outpatient perspective, of course, but also the inpatient perspective. So as a hospital pharmacist, I actually do counsel patients too. Um, at my specific hospital, we do bedside discharge counseling where you know, we bring the medication directly to the patient and we're there at bedside counseling them on important medication changes and just medications in general. And DOAX is one of the most commonly prescribed new medications at hospitals. Because oftentimes patients come in for a new clot, new BTE, or they're newly diagnosed with AFib, or even they were on some kind of anticoagulation before, but it wasn't effective, so they had to get switched to a different one. So general rule of thumb is try not to overwhelm the patient. Only bring up what's important. So why this medication? So DOAX have two different approved indications. One is for atrial fibrillation and the other is for VTE, venous thromboembolism. So for AFib, I like to explain that, you know, your heart is speeding irregularly and you're more prone to having clots. So it's really, really important that you are on this medication to, you know, thin your blood and prevent future clots. Something along the lines of that. You can always tweak it to how you want to explain to patients. I'm just giving you, you know, a brief example. Whereas a VTE is a bit more straightforward, you can tell the patient, you know, you've been administered hospital for a clot in your leg. Um, that's why this medication is really important because it's supposed to thin out your blood and prevent future clots from forming. The duration is also really important to tell the patient, so this is dependent on the provider. Uh, majority of patients will be on it lifelong. Um, and that's something you'll need to confirm with the doctor because you'll have to explain this to the patient as well. Whereas some patients, they'll be on it for a short period of time, either six months to a year, depending on the provider. Now how to take it. So some of the DOAX are to be taken once a day, like rivaroxaban, whereas some medications are to be taken twice a day, like apixaban. Now it's really, really important that you emphasize how it should be taken. You know, oftentimes I get a lot of patients, they come to the hospital, you know, they're hospitalized for a clot, and they tell me, oh, you know, I was taking my Pixaban, but I was combining two tablets all at once in the morning. No, that's not how it should be taken, and it probably could have contributed to the clot just because they weren't taking it correctly. It has to be taken one tablet in the morning or one tablet in the evening. So certain medications that are twice daily, you know, some patients, when they hear the words twice daily, kind of doesn't really sink in and they just hear the word daily or they don't think it's a big deal, they combine it. So you have to really explain, you know, it's you need to take the medication once in the morning and once in the evening. So really spell it out for them. Another important topic is drug interactions. So this is where it can tend to be very overwhelming for patients, you know, try not to list everything that could possibly interact with the medication because, you know, a person can't possibly remember. But of course, you know, they're going to get some kind of medication guide so they can always refer to everything. But the main thing I would focus on is to avoid NSAIDs with DOAX. So I give them examples like ibuprofen, Motrin, Aleve. Try not to take those medications because they can increase your risk of bleeding. 
and I usually tell patients so if you have a headache or you have some pain you can take Tylenol or acetaminophen and in addition to you know interactions with NSAIDs I like to emphasize you know try to avoid drinking alcohol because that can really increase your risk of bleeding as well and if you were to start any new medications please check with your doctor just so, so they can make sure that it doesn't interact with your blood thinner and then it's important to really check in with the patient midway too. So before I continue, you know, I, that was a lot to take in. Do you have any questions so far? Now side effects. Try not to scare the patient when you talk about black box warnings or side effects because our goal is to encourage them to take their medications. We don't want them to scare them away. So the only thing I would really emphasize with the blood thinner is, well, bleeding, right? That's the main side effect or risk. So I usually tell them, you know, minor bruising is okay, that's, that's normal, you might see that. Um, but what to look out for and what you should be careful of is, you know, if you have blood or dark tarry stool, or if you have a nosebleed that won't go away, um, those are some kind of concerning signs and symptoms that would prompt you to go to the ER. So ER precautions are also important to note to patients just so that they can know, you know the difference between like a mild side effect versus something very serious. And then one last thing I like to remind patients, you know, while you're on this blood thinner, it's really important to, you know, let your doctors know that you're on it. You know, sometimes even for routine dental procedures, it's really important because sometimes um, dentists might have you stop taking the medication a day or two prior. For major surgeries, that's really important. They might, might have you stop the medication five or seven days before also. Now that's everything I think I would go over with a patient that's new to a DOAC. Um, as you can see, you know, I try my best to cater to them and explain layman's terms. And it's really important to check in with them, like I mentioned, make sure they're not lost halfway through. It can be very overwhelming. And only focus on what you think is important and might be relevant to them. And try your best to you know make it conversational. If they steer you a different direction and ask about side effects, then you know just go to that and then circle back to what you're about to talk next. The counseling takes some practice and some time, but I really hope this video helps you when you counsel a patient on DOACs in the future.